In this experiment, you'll be using capillary electrophoresis to separate flavin adenine dinucleotide, riboflavin, and flavin mononucleotide. In this experiment, all the analyte solutions will already be pre-made for you by the laboratory staff. However, when you need to make a dilution in this experiment, it is very important that you use the water that comes from the white tapped in the sink, which is the distilled water. So to prepare your solutions to be loaded into the capillary electrophoresis, you need to filter them. The first thing you need to do is open up the syringe. If there's a needle attached to it, you need to carefully twist it off to remove it. And then you can stick your syringe directly into your beaker with your solution to be filtered. And slowly draw it up. Next, you need to attach your filter to the syringe. Now to do this, you're going to, to push the syringe into the filter and twist gently. I always double check to make sure that the filter is attached to the syringe because if it's not a tight seal, then when you, fil when you push your solution through the syringe, it'll come out of the juncture here and not be filtered. I'm just going to take the filter and set it on my vial and gently push through to filter the solution. To put on the cap, you just need to press it down. It's very important that when you put the lid onto the vial that you have it pressed completely down and completely flat. Because when you go to load your vials into the instrument, if the lids are not completely flush, then you have a potential to break the capillary. Once you're done filtering all of your solutions, you can turn on the instrument. All you need to do is to push in on the button. It's very important that you turn on the instrument before you open the software on the computer. So you need to log in. Once you're logged in, you can click on the 32 carat icon. Once the software is open, you can click on the CE icon. You can click exit out of this. And you want to open up your method that you'll be using. So to open up your method, you can go to file, method, open. And I'm opening the method 143 AM. So if you're in the AM, open the AM method. If you're in the PM, you can open the PM method. And I'm going to open up the variable voltage method. All right. To view the method, you go to method instrument setup. And here you can view the method that you'll be loaded, that will be loaded. All right. So hit apply. And now I want to save the method, so I'm going to go to File, Method, Save As. And I'm going to save it in a folder. And you're going to save it with your Hawk ID, and then a variable voltage. And just double check that you are saving this as a method file. Now we have to turn on the UV lamp. So to do this, you just need to move your cursor over the UV lamp in this direct control window and click it on. And when it asks you to turn it on, you say yes. So when the UV bulb is warming up, you can create your first sequence. So to do that, go to File, Sequence, New.
Now, the first method that you want to load is the rinse method. So to load the method, you click on this green diamond in the method cell. And scroll back up to the 143 AM methods. And you want to click on the 143 AM rinse method. All right. Now we want to load the method we created for our variable, variable voltage. So to do that, you just again click on the green diamond. And 143. And I'm going to click on the method I created. And then last, you want to load the rinse method again. So you need to enter file names for your variable voltage method. So type in your Hawk ID and variable voltage. Now we need to save our sequence before we run it. So to do that, we'll just go again up to File, Sequence, Save As. And I'll save it. I'm going to create a new folder here. And again, save it with your Hawk ID and variable voltage sequence. All right. Save. All right. Now before you initiate your sequence, you want to just double check a few things. You want to make sure um, you want to make sure that you've filtered all of your solutions, that all of the solutions in the vials are filled to their appropriate amounts and that they are flush when you load them into the capillary. All right, so to load your sequence, you can click on load in the direct control screen. Once you do this, this will bring your tray to the front so you can load in your samples. Before you load your vials into the capillary, you want to make sure that they are filled to the proper amount. So for vials that are for the inlet, they need to be filled approximately three quarters of the way full, but below the shoulder. For the outlet, they need to be filled a little bit less because there will be um, solution that is injected into the vial. And for the waste, you need to fill that ab only about two-thirds of the way full. Any of the waste vials that you um, fill just need to be filled with distilled water. Okay. So to load your vials, you just take them and set them into the tray. There is the grid that is located just above the tray that shows you exactly where to load your samples. I'm loading mine into the column C, into the morning section, just for demonstration purposes. All right. Here's where you want to make sure that all of your lids are flat and flush, so you can just take your hand and gently touch on the top because again if the lids are not flush and flat then you have a potential to break the capillary. All right. Once you have loaded all your samples you can close the lid and now we are ready to inject our samples. To inject your samples you need to click on control Sequence run. And you want to make sure that the sequence that you saved is appears in the cell. And then hit start. And this will inject your samples. Okay. Okay. 
So that loads your sequence to So as the CE is collecting data, you can watch the status of your sequence. So here it is now injecting the rinse vial, and the status here says acquiring. You can also watch the animation in the direct control window here to follow along which sample the instrument is injecting. So in the direct control window, there are a few things to note. The first is the pressure down here, and you want to make sure that when it maintains a constant pressure of around 20 PSI. Another thing to notice is this time remaining pie chart here, and this shows you the time that is remaining for that specific sample injection. You can also follow along up here and see where the and see when the sample is being injected into the capillary. When your first sample has been injected, you will notice this window pops up. And throughout the in sequence, you will notice that there will be a sort of step um, type graph. If you don't have a step type graph, that indicates that the instrument is not working properly. As you notice, you see some charges here in the capillary, and this indicates the separation of charges that are present in your sample. If you notice here, the voltage is at 3 kilovolts, and if you recall back to your method, that is the first um, voltage parameter that was tested. Once your variable voltage method has finished running and you have selected your optimum voltage, you can create your pH optimization sequence. All right, so to do that, we're going to go to File, Sequence, New. And this will bring up a blank sequence window. OK, so we first want to load our method here. So our first. Uh, sample that we want to inject is a rinse again. So I'm in the AM folder. I'm going to choose the rinse. The next one that we want to load is going to be our pH 6 RF sample. So we want 143 AM pH 6 RF. We're going to start at pH 6 and then you're going to load pH 7, pH 8, pH 9, and then last pH 10. So we're going to start at the low pH and end with the high pH. All right. The next one that we're going to load will be the FMN. Again, pH 6. You're going to load then the FAD. And the last one you will load for your pH 6 will be your mixture. Okay. When you are switching between when you're switching between pHs, you want to make sure that you inject a rinse sample. So next, I am going to do a rinse. All right. So I'm just showing you what your sequence would look like for your pH 6. You just repeat this for the rest of the pHs. The only thing you change is the you just choose pH 7 instead of pH 6. You need to make sure that you create file names for all of your sequences. So again, you want to type in your Hawk ID, pH, and then type in the analyte name. A 
again, you do not need a file name for your branch samples, only for your actual um, samples with your analytes. Okay. To save your sequence, you can go to File, Sequence, Save As, and you want to label it with your Hawk ID, PH, Optimization, and then Sequence. Again, I'm saving it in the folder I had already created. All right. I'm just going to open up a full sequence just for your demonstration purposes. So here you can see your full pH optimization sequence. So starting with pH 6 and finishing with the pH 10. One final thing to note is after you have loaded all of your pH 10 samples, you need to load a shutdown program. So to do that, you again will just click on the green diamond and all file. And it'll just be the shutdown method, which is the last one listed in the 143AM folder. So the two windows I have open here are just examples of what your chromatogram will look like and your current versus time plot for the rest of your sequences. Um, notice that if you remember back to the variable voltage sequence, the current versus time graph kind of looked like a staircase, whereas this one just looks like a flat line almost. If your current versus time graph for the remainder of your sequences looks like this, then that means the instrument is running properly. The electrofarogram on the left shows the separation of the mixture containing the three analytes at a pH of 9. To clean up for this lab, you can dispose of the vials and put, place these directly into the red sharps bin. If you have any remaining solutions in either volumetric flasks or beakers, these need to go in the waste container labeled capillary electrophoresis. Thanks.